record. All right, recording in progress. All right. As I said, it's unknown if we're gonna share this uh, uh, recording, but uh, so let's uh, let's see. All right, um, let's start. So EDRs, uh, ABs, um, yeah, all in uh, 2023 right now. So how do they work? Um, well, if you don't know exactly how an antivirus works, I'm gonna just drop up the basics there. So basically you have three different types of detections, put it in really simple. That is uh, monitoring signatures and heuristics behavior. And then in top of that, we now have uh, EDRs that, um, that basically they do interact with that. And they also have a strict rules that they follow in order to, uh, to get a, a detection uh, from, uh, yeah, from the actions that the user is uh, doing on the computer itself. Um, all of this is meant to track malicious activities and block uh, if, uh, if, well, it depends on how the EDR is configured and block or not, if it's active or passive, it depends, right? Uh, so you can think, think of an EDR, an EDR, uh, the EDR uh, acronym stands for endpoint uh, detection and response some sort of some sort the most uh, big ones they, so the bigger brands are uh, microsoft uh, atp that is uh, stands for advanced threat protection and the edr from crowdstrike uh, so those two they basically do the work on the uh, the same way they are deployed uh, using sccm or um, or, or manually uh, it depends how we, how those are deployed and yeah, uh, they, they call it a different, uh, they don't call it deployment, they call it the enrollment of, uh, of computer workstations in most of the cases. So when these, uh, these uh, uh, workstations are enrolled into these uh, EDR uh, hands, into this EDR active environment, uh, the EDR itself, so it's, uh, it's it's gonna work sort of a, like an endpoint protection from a, a AV perspective. So it's, it's, it's in that way. So basically everything that happens on the computer, it will be monitored, it will be uh, detected, uh, yeah, depending on the type of uh, detections that the EDR has. Uh, or, or one of the detections will, could be the antivirus itself, of course. And some other detections, some monitoring could be like a network, so all of the network itself that the, the, the workstation um, is part of or the next work that is accessing. Because remember that when I say EDR, uh, the EDRs, they don't stop on, on heuristics, uh, signatures, or yeah. It is they also track uh, actions of the user. So, so to make it uh, easier for, your, for you to understand, if you don't know what an action would be, it's like really easy. Like if a user, you can have this rule that uh, if, they, if a user opens CMD and then goes into Windows and uh, do, does a, a directory listing on Windows and then, I don't know, try to write a file, then might, that might potentially trigger a, a, a rule, right? On at least on ATP on Microsoft ATP, and then on top of that, it can con concatenate those rules. So if you try to remove a file from Windows, then it means that you are doing something either wrong or you are doing something malicious. And it's on top of that you are trying to access memory or uh, uh, drop something on a registry or do a, a, a I don't know some something that could trigger. Uh, a malicious activity type, then it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna potentially uh, execute an automated analysis of that workstation. I mean, as a whole of the, the whole workstation and uh, conducting an automated analysis it depends on the EDR, but in most of the cases, will not only uh, gather everything that is uh, from that computer, meaning the whole event uh, monitoring and a snapshot of some files, uh, it depends of, uh, again on the config, but also it will run um, uh, in most of the cases, again, it will try to execute an antivirus scan, right? Again, depending on the type of uh, 
of config, the, the antivirus scan will be choose a quick one on memory or will also include the folder, exception folders, and so on, right? So the access monitoring of a DDR, you can say that an EDR is, uh, is not only accessing monitoring, but also tracing the user and is uh, doing it on a, I don't want to say the word, but it's doing it on a holistic uh, way. So basically taking care of everything and, uh, and looking for everything on user behavior and action. Uh, so next works, files are include, of course, registry, read, write, and uh, memory. So everything that you do on memory and so on. And that's why uh, it leaves on user land in 19% in, in of the time, the EDR uh, plus the, uh, the binaries that they are, run, they are uh, executing in runtime uh, plus the, yeah, plus all the sensors, they will be running on user land besides the, uh, of course, the, the GUI. And there are some, uh, there are some, uh, in some cases, some uh, uh, kernel hooks, but uh, it depends again on the AV and the EDR. Sorry to mention that so many times, but uh, it's, it mostly depends on that. And the higher chance, they, 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 are, they are not that good because of course, as you man, can imagine, they are high chance of instability and a lot of uh, false negatives. So let's move on. I, that was a 10 minutes long of <laughs> what an EDR is. And if it's still not clear on how an EDR works or how um, yeah how those interact with the operating system and related uh, uh, monitoring in terms of uh, of course always re related to Windows uh, doing this talk uh, training uh, just please Google it <laughs> you will find way more better explanation than the one I just gave so uh, because the intention of uh, of this 20 is not to teach you what an EDR is, but to teach you how to bypass it, right? Because uh, if you, uh, as I, I think I mentioned it last week, if you are on this uh, training, if you are a customer of uh, Explain Pack, uh, there is a higher chance that you already tried Metasploit. There is a higher chance that you tried uh, uh, Cobalt Strike and other tools. Uh, uh, similar tools like MIDIC, like uh, Kadoic, uh, there are there are other tools uh, or C2s or frameworks that you have tried and failed. Of course, that's and and uh, hopefully you are here because of that. So you will learn how how actually it works and how you can make it work with Exploit Pack. And Exploit Pack is uh, the, the main difference is that it works out of the box. So you have to not, you don't have to do like. Uh, just create a shell code if you were Metasploit, try to get a, a I don't know, a, a one of their agents and then uh, try to apply an evasion technique or put in the source code using a, a packer a pack or something like that. It's, it's, it, 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 we keep it simple. We, we either have, and you will, we will uh, see later that we have divided the agents in two main categories and you can have it with bypasses, without bypasses, both works. And if they don't work, we take them away. We take them away because if they don't work, it doesn't mean that you have to add something on top of it. It means that they are deprecated and they are not working anymore for the uh, yeah for the the rules or the or the protections that are uh, yeah that are the moment uh, uh, on on your target, right? So. Let's go back to process creation and how these hooks and detections work. So when you spawn a process, uh, so basically you will have to end up calling uh, 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 the DLLs from Windows. In this case, NTDLL, uh, that is one of the known DLLs. And then you will cut one of the functions that is NT create user process. From that, you will get assigned in a, another space of the P, the NTDL DLL is mapped. It checks verification, then it gets initialized. And if you go into Procmon, you will see at that time that it is loaded. Oh, so someone is uh, has uh, the the Microsoft open. Uh, uh, let me check who is it. If you can close your mic uh, navigator, or otherwise I will I will mute you. Let me check this. Oh man, I suck with the uh, with Zoom. 
All right, next. Uh, done. And then uh, we have the initial thread started. And this, what you're going to see that the DLLs have been uh, loaded. Yeah, so that's if you look at the uh, Procmon, uh, you will see the DLL uh, muted there. And then you can see that the you, you have the set create process uh, notify routine. And from there, from there, uh, you will see the EDR callbacks uh, in, the, in this one, this choose call EDR.sys, but it, of course it depends on the DLL that has been injected into your process. And how you can see this, uh, quite easy, choose use one of the uh, six internal tools from uh, Microsoft itself. Uh, so you can use Process Explorer. Uh, if you don't have access to an EDR, uh, the same behavior will apply to any other antivirus. Not every antivirus, of course, but just pick one of the major ones. And you will see that if you span any process that could be uh, also, will, I think it will work as well with the Defender, uh, as far as I remember. So any process that is critical in some some not that good antivirus will mark every process as critical and then inject their own DLL into that uh, into that process. So it's the same behavior. Oh, no, not here. Boom. There. So it's the same behavior. And then you will have on the same stage your the DLL injected into it. So that DLL is going to try to trace the the process that you choose spawn it uh, during uh, uh, during runtime, of course, in user land. And remember here, this whole thing happened to NTDLL. Right, and that's important. That's important for you to know. Um, EDR trampolines, or basically any type of a trampoline uh, function. So, how does it work? If you don't know how a trampoline function works, it's quite easy to understand. Basically, you have a, a set of champ. This call, I said a set because you need two. Basically, one to champ and then to champ back, and then uh, basically you have your uh, your own function, then the function will have a jump. You can see it here. If you don't know what this is, this is assembly code. If you don't know assembly code, uh, choose start doing crack bees and then assembly. That's the only way, guys. Um, uh, start with IDA, uh, x64, or something similar. Um, OK. Back to it. So you have this uh, assembly code, and then you can see that first it started with a move R10 to uh, uh, from RCX R10, and then it instantly after that is doing a champ to NTDLL, and then from there is doing the champ, and then the champ to uh, to the EDR, doing all the magic here like EDR checks. So basically your code will start here, boom boom, champ champ champ, then doing all the magic here, and then. Uh, it's going to do the sham back and then it continues on the NTDL, right? So it depends, it depends if it's doing the sham or not. And this has been, uh, of course, uh, done by the EDR or, or, or the AB. That's why I mentioned it. Uh, if, you, if you look at, uh, let's say, uh, you spawn, uh, I don't know, a CMD or something like that. So go process... Uh, Process Explorer, uh, get a, any antivirus running on your machine, spawn and CMD, and you will see that uh, there will be an extra DLL uh, injected into your CMD. Yeah, because CMD in most of the cases would be a, a critical process or, or, or a potential uh, process that could be used for malicious activity. And then it will inject that DLL. As I said, uh, there are some antivirus that it will inject the DLL into every other process. And that, of course, brings uh, an issue and that is performance, right? That will affect performance for sure. But anyway, determining, hook, uh, determining how uh, 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 a syscall has been hooked. Um, so we know that this is unhooked and this is hooked, right? So green, uh, red. So here you see that it's doing a mob R10, uh, uh, sorry, RCX R10, and then it's doing the champ. Yeah. And then hack, the unhooked version doesn't has the, it doesn't contains the, 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 the champ, right? And then with this code, it's just a, a, 
a, a, a C plus uh, code uh, where you can choose check if uh, it has been hooked or not and how does it does it by just comparing uh, the memory uh, from this address uh, with the stub that we have here. And this is the stub that has been taken from the uh, this one, right? From the un unhooked one. And as it's quite easy to understand. So basically it gets as, a, as an input and an uh, LPC string, right? And then is uh, setting this uh, buffer with the well with the fingerprint of uh, the first two lines, right? So for C, you can see it here for C eight B, yeah. That it, and then D one uh, B eight. So basically checking for that. And if it doesn't contain so, so these these four, if it doesn't contain those opcodes, then it means uh, well. He is setting the buffer. I, I I went one step too far. So he is setting the buffer and then getting the address, yeah, the address of the get process address, get Mundre handle, NTDL and name, <laughs> and then checking those uh, uh, the address with the stub of those four opcodes. And if uh, if it's true, then it means that it's hooked, and it, otherwise it's not hooked. Right. All right, uh, so that's how you can check. And of course, what do you need? This code and then a fingerprint of uh, of every DLL that you wanted to check against, right? And how do you, uh, by, by how, how can you unhook it, right? So to unhook it, you can choose read the the original one and then choose replace it. That's that's quite easy, right? And on and, and you can choose do it on. You can always do it because uh, you are part of uh, of the same process. You are everything is running on user line, same privilege, same everything. So choose unhook it. So NTDLL, then choose doing the read text, and then you read the DLL from from here or or from the object, and then you can choose call it. That's one way. Of doing it. So let's go now to to here. So uh, this is a uh, this is a, a page basically EDR from from this uh, developer is uh, from GitHub. This is not uh, this is not from me, but it's uh, it's like I, I like this one because it has a list that. Uh, sorry. You say something? Oh, look, uh, yeah. All right, well, and then I continue. Don't be shy, guys. If you have any questions or a comment or something, just unmute yourself and say it out loud. All right, so I was saying that I like uh, this. Sorry, I have a question, if you may. Yeah, sure. Okay, so sometimes when we see that it's a hooked, a hooked function that the NTDLL um, is, is already hooked by an EDR. So if you if you want like to to take it or to you to use it in your on your file, it will be detected. So is there like if I just took a copy of that NTDLL or of any DLL I want to like to um, to put it on my code, I can just copy it and put it in, in anywhere in the system. And because nowadays I'm seeing people calling NTDLL from the internet. No, but the, the main issue here is not is not that they are ref making a reference in a static to the NTLL, the NTDLL, is that the NTLL is 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 being used, yeah, and the, it's being used by the DLL or the or, or, of 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 the code that the EDR or the antivirus is using to detect your calls, right? Yes. Yeah, so there are two different, two different, two different things. So when you make any call to any function that belongs to NTDL, NTDLL, that that's that's one of the DLLs, right? That you typically make a if you want to do like a create remote thread or call uh, or, or assign me, uh, memory to to a process or or interact with memory or anything. At some point, you will interact with one of the DLLs from Windows, right? And yes. the, the the AV or the EDR depends on how it's set up. It will inject 
RLL on user LAN, and then in from your process, it will check if you are doing something for using typically trampoline functions. Yeah. So it's not that you can call them directly. Is there is that the, the the patch is implemented during runtime. So what you want to do is to unpatch it. It's not that you need to patch it or read it directly, it's that you need to unpatch it. That's why is they are called unhook because they are already hooked. So that's that's basically uh, how it works. And I, I think if I move a little bit further, uh, you will see- Thank you very I, much. No, no worries. And and it will be more clear because I, I, also, I even gonna show you uh, 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 this program that I also I didn't make myself, but it's, uh, it's called Telemetry Sorcerer that it will enumerate in real time. I mean, it's not it's not useful for uh, for making um, a, a malware or a, a retimation, of course, because it doesn't have that ability, but it's really good for learning how these hooks uh, works because it will show you in real time, um, yeah, it will identify, as I say here, I don't, I don't think I have to explain it. It will identify collections based blind spot in the products they are an institute, uh, determine uh, the sources of telemetry. So basically it will get all the uh, hooks that are available uh, are, uh, on user mode hooks, on kernel mode callbacks. It will trace uh, sessions on ATW and it will, yeah, it will choose tell you during runtime in a more graphical way if uh if uh, if any anything has been hooked on on your own on your uh uh instance of the power spawned process that you have so it's quite good so you can try that will if we have enough time i will share it this and i will try to run it so you can see how it works but uh, let's go back to uh to the a little to the theory before we get into into the execution of uh the binaries and the hooking and the, and 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 everything. Let's uh, still uh, dig a little bit more on theory. So on um, this uh, repo, on this page, you will see a lot of a lot of uh, type of uh, techniques listed here. Uh, and one of the most interesting one. Oh, let me check if there is something on the chat. Um, but I will, I will appreciate guys if, uh, if you have any question or something, uh, choose unmute yourself is easier than, uh, reading the chat for me. All right. So, but what is important and what I'm taking you guys here is because it has a list of the EDR hook it API and what I'm taking you here, because you can say, Hey, Juan, but it's quite easy for me to detect the EDR hook it of a process, because if you choose open IDA uh, on a machine that is running ATP or CrowdStrike, then it's done. You can tell directly from there by just looking at the NTDLL, what are the hooks that you have there or not. But it's easier with McAfee, uh, Symantec, uh, and so on. But if you are talking about Carbon Black, if you are talking about CrowdStrike, if you are talking about Microsoft FTP, then you need a license of those, right? If you are doing a red team exercise and you don't know what are those hooks uh, that you are against to, like if you want to look for the CrowdStrike hook list, this is the one. Uh, so don't really trust this list if you can go deeper, but this is a good start. And I don't think it's gonna change because they need to change a lot if they want to change it, but it's a good start. Uh, so if you don't have the license, if you don't have a machine running CrowdStrike, if you don't have, you can use this, uh, uh, you can use this as a, as a good starting point. And the same scopes, let's say McAfee, uh, Checkpoint, and so on, right? So Checkpoint, you can see all of these uh, functions are uh, hooked. Yeah? Uh, so if you touch any, that, that it means that if you touch any of these functions, then your code will be analyzed if, if it happens to uh, checkpoint in this case was for uh, McAfee, I guess, and this one is for CrowdStrike, right? If you don't know what these functions are or uh, what they mean, you can choose double click, 
this one, look at it. And uh, thankfully you can look at the MSTN and then choose uh, go through it, what it means. And this one, for instance, uh, NT read memory, and you can choose an MSDN. Um, is this one undocumented? I don't think it's is it. Well, let's, <laughs> let's go for one that is on MSDN. Well, but you know, yeah, here is, but uh so basically that's it so and then you will know what the what how it looks like and then you can look for exactly the same function inside uh in the dll right and you or, or if you want if you have ida pro plus x-rays or something like that then you can choose look for it download the symbols get the source code from it and then uh, you can just check it in real time by yourself. That will that will be even easier. All right, but here is repeating, right? NTDLL, 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 right? Because it's hooking NTDLL. Most of these uh, EDR uh, sort of uh, hookings protections, they uh, they use NTDLL as a, as a, one of the main sources, right? Of information of what is happening on the machine itself, right? So let's go one step at a time. All right, this one. So here we have the, the so I'm gonna show you now three different things. So three different nations that we have. And I, we are not gonna touch this one because it's, uh, I, I was trying to explain last time, but I think it's not, really part of it because it doesn't really belongs to EDR bypasses even though it by because it's a bypass of PPL PPL that is uh, it's a different monster and it's not part of user one so we're gonna only focus on the agent itself here this agent and then how we can use this agent in different scenarios right they, this is the code of the Asian itself is completely clean, <coughs> undetected and undetected by EDRs and it's also undetected by, the, uh, and also let's check it. I just dropped it here. Yeah. So we have here, this is the code and you can see is a uh, uh, cross file Falcon say that is clean. If we look at the, hasn't been scanned by BIOS total or anything. But it is clean, so it's cross like it's clean, method, uh, and it's clean by ABs as well. And it has four leads. It has four leads or in terms of suspicion, uh, but it's not blocked or flagged at any case, right? So the agent that we have here, uh, the DLL agent, is completely clean. And this code, you can just change it. I mean, with this code itself, you can choose uh, go properties and said, I don't want a DLL, I want a binary, right? And you can choose change it. And then you can choose use it as a binary. I, I, I will not do that because it's better if you have it on a DLL. And that, that's, that's yeah, harder to, to detect. Um, all right, so this code is uh, working just fine. Uh, and here with this code, you can choose export it uh, to uh, export all the functions, and then you you can use it on a DLL that you want it. And then the second, oops, not proxy. And then the second one will be the same code, yeah, exactly the same code of uh, of the Asian of exploit pack. But in this case, we're gonna unhook NTDLL, right? Only NTDLL. Right, so we're gonna read from this NTDLL, look for the hooks, and then unhook everything, and re of course, basically replace um, the hooks uh, of that, and then and then that's it, and then you have NTDLL unhooked, and the agent run, and the agent running from a DLL, right? So all from a DLL, and then the third one, that is this one. You can do it again as a DLL or as a, as a or as a binary, but this one is different because it's not gonna to only unhook NTDLL, but 
everything that is part of a known DLL running uh, during runtime, right? So do you know what, um, you might know or not know what uh, known uh, DLLs are, but choose a quick explanation of it. So we have uh, in Windows, uh, a few DLLs that are used by uh, most of the processes. So when I spawn here, um, a command prompt, let me see if I can uh, show. Uh, where was it? Okay, I, someone is uh, with the microphone. All right, I have to mute you, Rami. There you go. All right, so going back to it. So as I say, so when you when you spawn a new process, there are some DLLs that are gonna be uh, spawned and loaded into that process. But in terms of performance, this will destroy your system if you start loading DLLs after DLLs after DLLs every time there is a new process being spawned on your OS, right? So what uh, what alternative do you have is to have some known DLLs list that if you uh, use a win object from sys internals here, you can see that we have a uh, known DLL, this handler, and then this one, it will uh, have a list of, uh, yeah, from no DLL path that is C Windows System 32. And from here, you have this list of DLLs that are used uh, I don't know how they got this list. I think it's in terms of statistics that they got this list out of it. And then from this list, every, every DLL on this list, it will be mapped into memory directly from disk. And then it's not gonna be read back. So every time you spawn a new process, these DLLs are gonna uh, be ready available for that process. So performance is not gonna get a hit, right? So that's, that's what uh, known DLLs are. Uh, so every time you spawn a process, you will see that you have a, a handler call it uh, known DLLs. And then that will include everything from known DLL if you need it. And of course, you know you need it because otherwise they will not be part of it. Um, all right, so those are known DLL. And as, as I mentioned, oh, sorry, I think I closed it. Yes, so as I mentioned, the known DLLs, one of those is NTDLL, the one that uh, every uh, other EDR and antivirus wants to hook and does uh, because it, they do contain uh, all these uh, uh, useful functions for interacting with the operating system that every, everyone wants to use, right? So they are part of it. All right, so with this, uh, with this Asian, what you can do is to choose and hook everything from it. So you will read it from uh, from disk. So you will you will read it from lead, uh, disk, uh, drop it into the detect section of the of the binary that you are using during runtime, and hook it and make the calls, yeah, directly from thereafter. So in that case, you will get a clean uh, execution and meaning that if you are unhooked, then it means that it's not gonna be detected, right? So uh, let me see, uh, show you how this works. And then after that, after I show you how it works, uh, we, can, we can just do this one, the DLL. I will show you how to get execution because doing a red team exercise, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop on, hey, I got this, it's unhooked. Now, now you will need a stager, you will need a damper, you will need a way of getting execution and persistence. So let me show you that. Uh, but first, let me uh, sip my coffee. All right. So, Let's get execution of it. So yes, we have the DLL. You can, if you don't want to compile it, you can use the one that is provided on your exploit pack instance, or you can choose get the code and compile it, but you will need to compile something if you want to use it on your own scenario, because 
uh, as you can imagine, we don't know on which uh, process do you want to attach that DLL. That's impossible to know. And if we make the external calls, um, uh, yeah, dynamic, then I don't think it's gonna be as uh, elegant <laughs> as it should the code. All right, so we go here and then um, let me go into that folder. I think it sh should be open here, yeah. So this one, when it's compiled, you have this DLL, it's advanced DLL injection. Uh, I have my exploit pack here. First, I'm gonna set this one as my address. And then here I have no connections, ash, ash, no Asians connected to it. And then I have, of course, the, the Asian interaction is, uh, is, is, is on standard mode. So basically there is nothing. And this of course will change with the Asians that you run. So if I run a web plugin Asian, it's got, I'm gonna get a different Asian interaction list of uh, features. If that, if I use a BBA payload, a Python reverse shell, a browser shell or a .NET Asian. So it depends. So that will change. And of course here, uh, it will show me the Asian connection and uh, look, uh, yeah, there is a new feature with the version 17 that will also show you the type of Asian that you got. So if you get a browser shell, then it will give you a browser shell plus the type of uh, the the uh, the the type of browser that you use. A BBS payload it will show the so it's easier. It's uh, it's it's better for for you as a operator, right? Uh, all right, so let's get that DLL executed. So what we need to do is to find a process that will execute this DLL. So I can give you, uh, of, of course, you can use a binary injector and do a, a, a DLL side load, but that's not the way, right? Because we are trying to do a red team exercise here. So um, there are several ways of finding uh, 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 binaries that will load your DLL or inject that DLL into, but what I, would we'll recommend is that you are doing a, a, um, a red team exercise is that try to use uh, done yeah there try to use one of windows um, binaries right that will choose try to load a DLL um, it depends on what is installed, what is your target, what is the image, uh, the workstation that you are targeted targeting into. But if it's running Windows 10, you can be sure that it's this place. Uh, there are several ways, guys, of doing it. I'm just going to show you one easy, easy way of finding. So it's under C, Windows, and this is a good folder to start. And it's not the only one, of course, but all of these dot, uh, dot .net uh, uh, and binaries that you will you will get here, they are most in most of the cases trying to load something from. And you need, a, of course, a folder that it will be read and write uh, that you will have read R R D R W access. Sorry. All right. So I got one, of course. I'm going to show you that one. And he, I have two different dumpers. If if you need a damper, of course, and you can use the BBS one. That's basically, and you have also here this on exploit pack that it contains the Asian on base sixty four, and then basically it's gonna d base sixty four the the code and then choose get it into the DLL that you wanted and then get execution of uh, of the binary that yeah that you needed. You can do it also with a bat one, yeah? But this will trigger, if you use installer, search, choose. What you need to do, guys, if you are targeting uh, a workstation first, you need to know if you are against CrossStrike or ATP or, or, or the, yeah, or the EDR. Because it depend depending on the, on that, then you will know that there are some default rules that you need to be aware of. In the case of uh, uh, ATP, everything that is .NET coming from PowerShell, coming from WMI, coming from installers, uh, from the installer set, and so on, it will get detected. 
So if you use cert util, it will not get detected. It will not be flat and stop, but it will be a part of, right? Remember that I said that it's just at the EDRs, they are not AVs. They are not just blocking, they are not just blocking what action. They will trace those actions and they com will come out with a story out of those actions and say, this is a malicious action, yes or no, because they have to compare the behavior between your actions as a red teamer and the actions of a sysadmin, right? So, and sysadmin should be able to call PowerShell, should be able to call WMI, should be able to call cert util. So they need to know what if <laughs> if you do cert util and then dump up dump up binary, dump up base C4 into a process and then try to call it, inject that yellow into something, yeah. Of course, after the injection, you will get the bypass. Uh, you can hook, uh, do everything like that, right? But I show you how to do the hooking and how to uh, get uh, uh, the EDR and the AB bypasses using as as 2023 January. That's that should that should uh, work. But how do you get there? In order to get there, you need, you need to do you need to get execution. And you can be blocked before of that, before that, right? So if you, as I mentioned, you can have the best DLL, the best binary, but if you try to do it manually and go open CMD, and then you do PowerShell, and then you do CD Windows, this action, so CD Windows, CD Temp, this action, what I did, this open a CMD PowerShell, going to see Windows 10 and trying to do like, if if I do type hello into hello.bin, then that will, it will take, it, it will it will flag something, right? It will get, it will get a, it will, it will start a trace or it will start automatic investigation or will get flagged. Just have that in mind. All right, in any case, uh, this is uh, part of the web engine from ASP.dev.wp. So if I go into that folder, oh, that I was already there, then of course this one is gonna be missing. And this is the one that we want to run. Before we run it, let me show you for, I'm, I will, Suppose that you already know how to do this, because if you are interested into bypassing EDRs, then it means that you already know how to uh, do a lot of stuff. But in any case, I'm gonna show you. Uh, so let's say I'm running this binary and I don't have the web and shine the DLL into that folder, right? So this is what is, what is important. Uh, so it's not there. So the the if I it, this is using I'm using Procmon. You can use anything you want it. You don't you don't have to use Procmon. Um, there are other uh, uh, binaries that will do some process monitoring. I use Procmon because I know it's available and well known by anyone, everyone. But basically, this is uh, the way of uh, finding. This is the simplest way and basic way of finding a DLL injection. So name not found for the result that is uh, here. Here, sorry, here is the column with the ref, uh, uh, result. So I'm just using uh, name not found. Then the path ends with the DLL. Uh, this is the path, the column path. And then that's it. Um, for some reason, I also get in that one. So I don't need that one. And then if you are looking for a previous escalation or something, then you can also try to look for this one or anything else. And if you want to know the whose user is uh, trying to access that one, you need to go here, select columns, and then do username, and then you will get it. Um, so what you need to do in order to find this, so after you have those filters, choose run anything, every, anything and everything from WinSX on your laboratory. So you see Windows WinSX or anything that it belongs to Windows, and you can, you can, how do you do that? You can do a D on the whole C folder, and then uh, using a PowerShell script, you can drop all the signatures from the binaries and then make a huge list, a humongous list of binaries that contains a Microsoft uh, uh, signature. And then you know that you get it with the patch and you can uh, choose uh, run all of them and look 
automatically for 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 uh, DLN injections. Sorry. More coffee. All right, this one is uh, trying to load uh, web engine. You can see it here. So first it's trying to look at, put it at the same directory that the binary lives on. So this one, see we blah, 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 spwp.exe. Then, it, then it's looking everywhere. So everywhere, meaning the, uh, the path that I have uh, here assigned, the environment variable, so everywhere here. So it's looking for uh, the web engine.dll. I don't have access to these folders except for these ones, uh, this one, and of course the Windows uh, apps folder. And that's where I'm gonna drop it, it's here. Choose me, because it could be anywhere, anywhere else that I have access. Of course, see Windows 1632. Here, I don't have access. I don't have access. And, well, this one, no, because it's a different binary. But uh, this one, I don't have access. Well, I do have access, but I cannot write. So uh, as a regular user, I can just do it. I'm, no, I'm going to restrain myself into user lab. So drop it there. Change it for web engine DLL. And now if I run it, actually, uh, let me show you one more time and let me show you the load of the LLL. So I'm gonna change the name so it does, it's not found. Drop it again. But now I'm gonna include the process name and take out the not found. There you go. Because now I'm gonna provide the process with webenshine.dll. And it might be that webenshine.dll from here, Windows app is also used by other processes. But here, here it is. So I choose here. So when you, when you have a new agent, uh, Expert Pack will let you know with the speakers as well. We we'll run a, 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 a sound that say a new remote action connected. So I, I got it. Uh, it is connected and you can see that the image has been loaded into the process. And here you can, you can see it. That is web engine and it's coming from uh, C Windows, yep, the, the folder basically that, that, that we use it. And this is the agent from Exploit Pack. Right, and this is the clean agent, right? So we have it here and it says uh, you will get SPL package connected operating system. So it will change depending on the operating system. Of course, the local IP address will your, it will be yours. Then it will, it's gonna tell you on which process it is hiding into. Well, we know already it's hiding into that uh, process, but it's really useful if you are doing like a net, uh, net profiler or a type of infection that is more broad, uh, uh, then you don't know on which process you are hiding, right? But in this case, you know exactly on which process, the P identifier and the privileges that you got in case that you are using one of the privilege escalation types and PPL, if you got PPL access or not, in this case, none. And of course, I'm EA user meaning that I have no system rights or anything. If you want to interact with the with that Asian, you click on the Asian itself, and then you will have all the, um, the Asian interactions, or you can choose come here and say, uh, uh, dear, and then you can choose use it as a console. You see that I have a Windows target with a DLL running on it from the DLL Asian. So uh, then it's, you're gonna get common executed, and uh, the, yeah, of course, uh, if I want to do, let's say system info, uh, choose another command. Every command takes around a second to, to be uh, pulled back from the, uh, from the foundation itself. Uh, let's do, uh, didn't, didn't run system info. Let's, 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 let's do it again. Maybe I type it in a while. Now we should get it. Me Meanwhile, I'm gonna take a sip, my coffee, there you go. And 
and and you can you can do auto exec as well. So basically, in auto exec, you can uh, deploy uh, automatically commands for every new agent that you have, for instance. Because if you are doing a ready exercise and you you let's say you do this, but from a USB USB sticks that uh, that you drop it uh, on on your yeah on your corporate target. Let's say you are trying to target uh, uh, a department, and then you drop some USB sticks or something, or send an email uh, with a phishing uh, campaign, including these binaries, and then you don't know when when this is going to happen or not, right? Maybe it's someone that is uh, only connected by night or something that you want to do some uh, actions, and you want to leave some actions to happen. Like go into this folder, uh, look for uh, doc files, and then uh, send those doc files back to Exploit Pack or or uh, or enough. Do something with the computer, right? So you want to that to be uh, auto executed when the agent is connected, right? So you can do that as well uh, using the auto exec and then save it uh, we, uh, as a config. All right. Uh, when you are done with it. If you want to remove it, you can choose kill the agent if it has the, the features of it. Or if you, if you are choose testing, you can choose uh, kill the agent here because we know that it hasn't been uh, dropped into a different uh, uh, binary or anything, right? So going back uh, to it, if this was running on a process that you wanted to unhook the NT DLL, you can choose do use the same agent, same behavior. Nothing will change on uh, on that regard, but it will during the during that during uh, during execution, it will also call unhook NTDLL and unhook NTDLL. Or you can choose add all the uh, unhooks that you wanted it to. If you want to go one step further, you can unhook the whole. Uh, let me let me show you how this uh, will look like. I have it this compiled uh, on a CMD. And um, first, let me show you the list that I have on known DLLs so you can compare it first. So these are the known DLLs that I have on this uh, lab. Oops, wrong one. And then if I uh, execute uh, known, DLLs here, then you will see, yeah, that I have all these uh, uh, DLLs unhooked. Kernel 32, kernel base, user 32, win 32, GDI, GDI. And these DLLs are the ones that are here. See, these are the ones. So there, if you use the Asian with the known DLL and hooks, then what's gonna happen is that not only, un, it's not gonna, gonna, going to only unhook uh, uh, NTDLL, yeah? but it's also unhook everything from known DLL. Um, so now the question, if we go back to, um, to here, to this sandbox is uh, which agent to choose? Well, you need to choose the one that it will not be detected and the one that is gonna uh, make it, make your life easier on the target, right? So it depends on the agent that you can use a combination of those agents, of course, and it depends on the agent that you need to choose. And uh, let me give you one last trick. Um, actually, two last tricks. After you are there, there is one simple thing that you can do that is create a directory of uh, windows there. And then there you can, do you remember, do you recall this? This is something similar. So let's say I'm doing MKDIR, uh, uh, hello. And then if I do hello, this is the same trick and it's, it's quite useful for, because I, I assume that you're right, you already got access. You need to use a folder that it shouldn't be temp. It should be, it shouldn't be tasks. It should, it shouldn't be 
uh, a hidden folder or something, but you need to be <coughs> on user land and don't trigger any alert. So how do you move those files? How do how do how do you move those files uh, before you do an exfiltration without triggering alerts and so on? So on Linux uh, from the eighties, you can if you do ls like that, you have one dot, two dots. So that depends on going one directory up, two directory ups, and then you can do three dots. And one dot plus the name of the folder, it means that that folder is going to be hidden from ls. And then if you have three dots, then it means that you have a folder called uh, uh, three dots, but it's hidden because you have one dot on top, right? So this one is an easy trick. And I have seen this on the wild film since like the 80s. Uh, that, uh, yeah. So similar trick on Windows create a folder call it windows they will point into windows it will it will if you see both folders they are going into windows but they are both but one of those folders is different because it contains uh, it contains uh, an space in uh, 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 as a trail so and that is taken away from explorer because this is how it uh, works on uh, on on windows so you have two different folders, but one and both folders do link into the same folder because when I, when I click on one, it's removing this space, but I can have stuff there that is not gonna be under Windows, right? So that's an easy an easy trick to exfil and then of course after that remove it, right? But in the case that you are doing a multiple day exercise that you have to capture documents or uh, files or anything, let's say uh, you got access, but then your documents will only pop up on that computer one week later. So where, 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 are, where are you gonna put those documents? In which folder, where? So this is one simple trick. Uh, you can find better than those, but this is, that's one. And how are you gonna get, um, how are, are you gonna get, Oh, you see now it's uh, now it's showing the space. You see it here. C Windows Space Task. So how how are you gonna get uh, persistence? Because so far I told you about uh, how to get execution, but persistence is quite easy as well. Windows in in January uh, twenty twenty three. So you can use the uh, uh, privilege escalator here from Exploit Pack that will give you persistence as well. So is the privilege escalation is the net profile .net profiler. So use the advanced uh, the advanced DLL injection agent with or without the bypasses, with or without the hooks of uh, known DLLs, depending on on what you needed. All three versions they are clean today. They might not be clean, and as soon as they are not clean, we're gonna build different ones. We're gonna try to, uh, we try always try to uh, be on top of it and on the edge of uh, what's new. And this, as today will work, is completely undetected. This uh, the core profile is one of the uh, features of uh, .NET, and it's, oh, it helps you to inject basically a DLL. Uh, from a CLS ID, and then this this will be set on the current user, so on the current user, the, on the environment variables, and then it will load on every reboot uh, the DLL itself. And of course, uh, if you do that, then it means that every .NET project, every .NET binary will have a DLL injected into it. So then, what you need to do is to read for I think I we have it uh, here already. Uh, uh, one of those. Let me look for it. Well, what what I meant is that you need to look for the process I uh, for the process name. Not yeah, not here. But what we need to do, what you need to do, is to look for the uh, process name. 
So this one, I make an if, right? So don't inject yourself into every other process. So let's say you want simple way, inject only to Explorer. So say if the, uh, the process name that you have it here is not explorer.dxe, then don't inject yourself. Otherwise you will inject on into every other process and you don't want to have multiple agents running uh, uh, in the same computer that will be a little bit chaotic. And that will get you persistent. So every time the Explorer is spawned on, on reboot is spawned on, yeah, on yeah, almost every action will spawn a, a, a new explorer.dxe process, or at least you will have it, at least you will have one on reboot. And then that will keep you, uh, um, yeah, that will give you the agent. Uh, and that should be it, guys. I think that's a lot of information. I will say you should start playing with that. And there are different ways of bypassing the, the EDRs. I choose showing you a specific bypass for DLLs and the hooks and how the EDR works. You can, these are actions that are called bypasses because they are, they are detection rules and we are bypassing those rules, right? There are other ways like the, like having choose a clean code that they want to show you. And there are other ways like remaining under the radar of an EDR, meaning using a packer, like uh, using a Py the Python, uh, I'm just mentioning it because I have the Python uh, uh, Asian of exploit pack here. But if you grab this Python Asian and then you use Py2exe or Py, Py installer or something like that, then you will create a packer, meaning that you will have the uh, Python Asian plus exploit pack and the Python code is not detected. Or you can use something like the Mira or you can use VM protect or something like that. And then you will have, you will be under the radar of the EDR, right? But under the radar of the EDR, it doesn't mean that you are bypassing the EDR. To bypass the EDR, then you need to target the restrictions that the EDR is, uh, is uh, getting your process into like the injection that patching the patching the the hooks and so on there are other ways and other restrictions that they are uh, that you need to be aware of but like uh like monitoring telemetry and so on but that's uh, that's gonna be uh for one or two more hours and guys i hope you enjoyed this time hopefully everything went according to plan uh if you if you have any questions for me or the rest of the team, please, uh, I encourage you guys that you go into Discord uh, or to our channel or write us a, a ticket uh, on, on support. And I hope you enjoy it. I will see you guys next month. And yeah, let's see uh, what is the next topic. Hopefully something related to reversing or exploit or, 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 or an exploit development. Let's see how, how do we feel about that. Thank you guys and enjoy your Friday. Bye. Thank you. Great as always. I hope we get the video. It would be awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.